Hey everyone, today we'll be focusing on thermal properties of water. So before we were looking at heat, uh, heat capacity and heats of dissolution and all these other things, but now we'll be focusing just on water and how it, this uh, can affect a lot of uh, plant and animal life. So body temperature. Temperature is an important uh, in sustaining life. We need to have a specific temperature for enzymes to work, uh, for everything in our bodies to be able to function properly. So living things need to maintain a constant body temperature to function properly. Um, and water is found in almost all biological systems. So water can regulate temperature because it has a high heat capacity. So that means water can absorb a lot of heat energy before there's a change in the temperature. Water also has high thermal conductivity, which means that water transfers heat quickly. So if I have a heat source in one spot, the other, uh, on the other side of the lake, then it will quickly turn warm because you can, uh, it will transfer the heat from one spot to the next. Temperature is fairly constant from day to night and across seasons because water can do this. Temperature regulation in land animals, however, land organisms are not surrounded by water like aquatic animals and therefore they cannot rely on water to cool them. So to cool ourselves or other animals that live on the land, they sweat. Heat is removed from the body in order to evaporate the sweat and therefore it cools our cells. However, th there's also thermal pollution. Uh, the discharge of a large amount of water into a river or lake that increases the temperature to about two to, from two to five degrees Celsius is considered to be a thermal pollutant. So this usually occurs when factories use water as a coolant to cool their machines and then they pump the water into a lake or a river to cool uh, to get rid of it and then the lake and the water in the lake or the river uh, absorbs the heat and rises in temperature. So there's a lot of problems with this and uh, problems are when lots of hot water is pumped back in. The increase in temperature reduces solubility of oxygen uh, leading to suffocation in a lot of aquatic animals and reduced oxygen can kill aquatic life. An increase in 5 degrees Celsius can result in a reduction of about 10% of oxygen in the water. So when we look at the solubility of gases with temperature, as we increase in temperature from 0 to 50, we get a decrease in the solubility of gases in, all, in most of them except for helium. What's particularly important here is the decrease of oxygen when we increase the temperature. So at 15 degrees Celsius, uh, we can get 1.6 millimoles per litre of oxygen dissolved. But when we increase the temperature to 40, we only get 1.1 millimoles of water uh, per litre um, of oxygen being able to be dissolved. So when we have higher temperatures, there's less chance of oxygen being available. And also at, there's less, chance of, less amounts of CO2 at higher temperatures as well. But what does this mean? Um, it affects a lot of aquatic life, so the less dissolved oxygen stresses organisms in there. Increased, meta uh, increased temperature also increases the metabol um, metabolic rate leading to more oxygen needed. So because we have more heat there, uh, a lot more energy, kinetic energy is happening with molecules and therefore their metabolism increases. And when metabolism increases, it means they need more oxygen to, make their, to do their processes and therefore reduce, uh, increases the oxygen demand. Fish eggs also need a specific temperature to hatch. So if we increase the temperature with thermal pollution, then these eggs may not hatch. And fish may migrate or spawn at the wrong times of the year because they base their um, reproduction cycle on the temperature of the water. Some aquatic life may also die if it's too hot. So some aquatic life may need cooler temperatures for their body to function properly and when we increase the temperature it may cause them to die. So thermal pollution is the pollution of uh, heat into water sources such as rivers and lakes and these have a lot of effects on aquatic life and they can change the amount of um, fish being hatched, they can change the migration patterns, they can kill, uh, reduce the amount of oxygen available. So using that we can answer a few questions to uh, revise. Question six, what are the two properties of water which are important in sustaining life and why? So life requires a constant temperature. Water has high heat capacity, meaning it can absorb large amounts of heat energy before the temperature of the water changes or rises. 
Water has high thermal conductivity, meaning heat is transferred quickly from hot areas to cooler areas. So water is able to maintain a fairly constant temperature to sustain life. Question 7. Define thermal pollution. So the pollution is an introduction of waste and contaminants into a natural environment. Thermal pollution is the introduction of waste heat from factories or power stations into a natural environment such as a river or a lake. Thermal pollution is considered to occur when the temperature rises 2 to 5 degrees. Question 8. Describe a way that land organisms can regulate the temperature using water. Land animals contain water within them. Land animals can sweat or perspire so that water sits on their skin. The water can then absorb heat from the skin and uh, evaporate. And evaporation removes the heat from the skin and therefore cools the body down. Question 9. Describe the trend of solubility of gases with temperature. As you increase the temperature of a liquid, the solubility of the gas decreases. Question 10. Describe the effects of increased water temperature on aquatic life. Increased water temperature leads to decreased solubility of oxygen. And this can cause aquatic life to suffocate because there's a lack of, lack of oxygen available. Increased temperature speeds up chemical reactions in the body and increases me metabolic rate, which increases the demand of oxygen. Because when we use uh, metabolism, we're changing uh, glucose or sugars into things that we need and this requires oxygen. So when we increase metabolic rate and chemical reactions, oxygen is being used up. This exacerbates the problem of already reduced oxygen in the water because with increased um, temperature we have decreased solubility. Certain fish and such as salmon migrate during different times of the season and the seasons dictate how hot and how cold the water is. So they judge the season based on the water temperature. So if we heat it up, it seems like summer has come too early. So changing the water temperature may change their migration pattern and reproduction cycle because they use the temperature to gauge when they should do certain things. So in summary, thermal pollution is a really bad thing and it usually occurs from factories or uh, other places that need to use water as a coolant and get rid of waste heat. So when they get rid of the waste heat, it pumps it into the rivers and lakes, heating them up. And this can cause a lot of problems by decreasing the amount of oxygen available. It also uh, increases metabol metabolic rate, increasing the amount of oxygen consumption. And then also it can affect uh, aquatic life by um, affecting their reproduction cycle and their migration patterns. So also, uh, just to let you know that uh, this is the last section of water. So we have exam preparation paper videos available and so I will see you then to help you out. Thank you.